On October 1st, the lives of thousands of our Bahamian brothers and sisters in the Southern Islands were savagely disrupted by Hurricane Joaquin. What is the extent of the damage? And what is now being done to repair their shattered lives? Cable Bahamas presents In Focus, where we examine this country's Operation Full Restoration. Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MV12 Weekend, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight, news, police investigating the country's two most recent murders. The PLP chairman defends government's handling of Hurricane Joaquin. The psychological effects of major storm devastation. How a local designer is raising breast cancer awareness. And as always, we count down the top quotes and news this week. I'm Paige McCartney. We've got those stories and more straight ahead on MV12 Weekend. <laughs> Welcome once again to MB12. The family of a recent new father is grieving his death tonight after a gunman shot him in the Camp Road area not far from his home. Police were called to the scene at around 745 last night after there were reports of gunshots in the area. Their officers found the man's body in a pool of blood. Preliminary information is that this male had walked to the side of an establishment. Uh, obviously going home where he resides in the white addition area when we believe that he was accosted by either one or two assailants who produced handguns and uh, began discharging shots at him. He attempted to run back towards Camp Road where he collapsed. Uh, we found him there, EMS visited the scene as well and pronounced this male dead on scene. The victim was identified by relatives as 32-year-old Jamal Moxie, who worked as a jet ski operator. They said he was father to a nine-month-old little boy. Police are asking for help in solving this latest killing. We wish to appeal to persons in the Camp Road area here who would have any information in regards to this uh, latest homicide to reach out to us and to help us with this investigation so we could bring some resolution to this as quick as possible. The bloodshed didn't end there. Police are also reporting that just a couple hours later, a man was shot at Sunshine Park. Reports are that at around 9 p.m., the victim got into an altercation with two other men. When one of them shot him, he was taken to hospital where he died soon after. Police say they are following significant leads in that matter. Well, it's been three years since a memorial wall for murder victims was established at New Covenant Baptist Church. And since then, retired senior pastor Bishop Simeon Hall says the names of victims have more than doubled. In fact, he says the wall is quickly filling up with the names of those whose lives were cut short at the hands of others and requests continue to pour in from families who want their loved ones memorialized. We do what we want to do and what we don't want to pay for, we cry. But be that as it may, so we're talking to a company now who we are asking to sponsor some of them. We want to stand with these people. The wall was established in August 2012, starting out with only 70 names. Today, that number has increased to nearly 200. Hall says the wall is an impressive yet sorrowful, sorrowful reminder of the serious level of crime in the country. Every Saturday, one of our churches is burying a murdered victim. And this bloodshedding, we need to find a way to stop it. Hall says he and his team are preparing to add yet another name to the wall during a special ceremony that will be held later this month. In other news, PLP Chairman Bradley Roberts is brushing off public criticism of government's handling of Hurricane Joaquin's devastation over central and southern Bahamas. In the days following the Category 4 hurricane's passage, there was public outcry over government's slow response to the affected islands, with many blaming the National Emergency Management Agency for not properly preparing residents for the storm. Roberts had this to say about the criticism. Um, even Christ had his critics, my dear. All right? So I, I, we expect uh, criticism in whatever we do. As perfect as we are, you will have uh, people criticizing you. And they do so mischievously for 
for their own selfish reasons. Joaquin hovered over the southern Bahamas for more than 36 hours. The day after the storm passed, as residents were picking up the pieces of their lives, some were critical of the prime minister's decision to attend four funerals rather than immediately attend to the needs of those affected by the storm. Roberts said all of the prime minister's engagements are important. Not a form of devastation, people losing lives. That's devastation as well. Nobody lost any lives during the hurricane. Thank God for that. So you see the, the two extremes. Um, so you're damn if you do and you're damn if you don't for some people. And that's just the business that we're in. You can't please everybody. <laughs> Last week, the PLP announced it's postponing its planned November convention in light of the devastation caused by Joaquin. Though disappointed, Roberts said focus must be placed on restoring those battered islands. We were all disappointed, but uh, that uh, uh, hurricane uh, came out of, the, out of the blue. I was personally hoping that we would have gone a third year without a hurricane, but uh, uh, it is what it is, and we felt that... Uh, we ought not to be engaging in a political exercise, taking the time of the government, ministers, and all the MPs uh, whose attention should be focused on recovery and so forth at this time. So this is hence the decision to um, postpone it until next year. And of the highly anticipated PLP leadership race, the party chairman said. We are a democratic organization, and if there's anyone interested in challenging anyone for any of the positions in the party, they would have the right to do so. The, the, I encourage that, anyone who wants to do so. Yes, now, some might not like the results, the end results, but uh, it is what it is. <laughs> Although it's been weeks since Hurricane Joaquin ravaged islands in the central and southern Bahamas, the impact remains devastating, not only physically, but also mentally. That's according to a team of psychologists who have visited several of the hardest hit areas. Our Jasmine Brown spoke with the team's lead psychologist. She filed this report. Weeks after the storm battered those islands, Major says it continues to have a huge impact, going beyond battering property and priceless possessions. Facing a trauma like this really does bring to the forefront one's emotions and feelings. We found grown men, you know, crying. We found individuals who had experienced such trauma that in one case a lady actually, you know, put some tape across her chest with her name and information in case her body was found, they would know who to contact as next of kin. It's stories like this that highlight the psychological scars left behind by Joaquin. In fact, Major says many of the residents are trying to cope with the psychological aftermath after the Category 4 cyclone. And that's where she and her team fit into the equation. Since the storm, the mental health professionals have made several trips to the islands that have been devastated. She says based on their interactions with those residents, it's clear that many have been scarred psychologically. Anxiety, despair and depression are common emotions experienced by both children and adults following the devastation. What we found was that all age populations were affected. We found kids who had been locked in cars for 18 hours or in ceilings for 15 hours, adults who were traumatized by the, their loss as well as the amount of hours that they were suffering in, in the hurricane. We found elderly individuals who were also very numb. We met a series of kids who are having difficulty sleeping, are having nightmares, um, have many fears related to the chance that there's another hurricane coming, you know, triggers of rain that spark uh, emotions and feelings of fear. Major, who was also a grief counselor in Louisiana following Hurricane Katrina, says the experience is quite similar, except for the fact that there were no deaths caused by Joaquin. But she adds that, like in Louisiana, in many of the cases, residents are still struggling to process what happened as they piece their lives back together. Major says these feelings are compounded by the stress of living in a new environment, starting a new job or school, and the struggle to rebuild. What we know is after a natural disaster, there are many implications to individuals who have had the experience of a traumatic event. Many of them occur in both physical symptoms and both emotional as well as psychologically based needs. Uh, many victims of natural disasters have 
difficulties processing the event to which they were involved in, as well as the events post the natural disaster. Such We also know that the sooner we get in there and start crisis management, the better outcome there is for these individuals in the community. And so what we, try, what we are trying to do is get in there and provide these services so that we are addressing those psychologically based needs so our families and our community can move forward much quicker. Major says she and her team will continue their work and plan to visit those communities at least once a week. Reporting for NB12, I'm Jasmine Brown.